Hi and welcome back to the knowledge portal video series. So in the last few videos we were talking about the passive health monitoring as well as the difference between an active as well as passive health checks. So in this module we'll be talking in detail about active health monitoring as well as shared memory for worker processes. So we have already discussed the basic nginx architecture so i assume you already know why worker and master processes are used for so basically here we have three clients and we already know clients connect to the worker processes now let's assume that this is client one this is client two and this is client three now client one let's say it's connected to the worker process one. So this is where the client one is connected. Now worker process one tries to retrieve the resources from the server pool. So there are three upstream servers over here. And at three and it first contacts the server one. So this is server one and the server one fails to respond back. So it writes an entry into its table saying server one is down. Then it tries to contact, let's say server three, even server three fails to respond back. So it writes an entry to the table saying the server three is also down. And then finally it contacts the server two and the server two responds back. So for this particular worker process, the server one and server three are down because they are not responding. So any new request that this particular worker process will get, it will not send to this server one and server three for a certain interval of time. It will only send those requests to server two. Now, one of the issues is that the table is specific to a worker process. So let's assume that the client two connects to the worker process number four. Now, according to the worker process state table, there are no servers down. So it will try to contact server one. Server one is not responding. So it will write server one is down. Then it contacts, let's say server three, even server three is not responding. And it will note that the server three is down. Then it will contact server two and server two responds back. And again, worker process four knows that the server two is up and running. Now the problem with this type of approach is that every worker process has different zone file for maintaining the state table. And this is a big problem. So this is resolved with the help of shared memory. So let's go down. And let's see on how shared memory based architecture helps. So what happens is shared memories, there is one common zone file. And this zone file is read by all the four worker processes. So taking the same example again, so client one connects to this particular worker process. This worker process will contact server one and server three and they fail to respond. So the worker process will write an entry to the state table saying server one and server three are down. So if client two connects to the server four, server four can read the zone file from here and can easily make out on which servers are up and running or which servers are down. So here the worker process number four knows that the server one and server three is down. So it will directly contact the server two instead of trying to contact server one and server three again. So this is why it becomes beneficial to have a common zone file. So in active health monitoring, we use a common zone file for all the worker processes. So let me show you the example so let me open the nginx configuration i have already configured this nginx for active health monitoring
so there are two new directives over here one is zone and one is health check over here so zone we have already discussed so this zone is basically the shared memory so this is what we were talking about so so zone backend 64k so 64k is the amount of memory that the zone file will have so this is the reason why we have mentioned zone backend 64k so for this backend there will be 64k of shared memory which all the worker processes will be using and the second thing that we have to add in the active health monitoring is we have to add health underscore check directive so by default once you add the health underscore check directive it will start to send the get request to both of the upstream servers every 5 seconds and verify that the servers are up and running so again we have already discussed this in the last lecture also if I do a tail over here you see it is actually sending the get request every 5 seconds to make sure the server is up and running and this is what a basic active health monitoring is so always remember if you are using active health monitoring you will have to have a common zone file and you need to include the health underscore check parameter beneath the proxy pass directive so this is it about the basics of active health monitoring we'll be discussing uh, in more detail about this in the upcoming video so i hope this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for viewing